species. Does anyone know much about invasive species or what that means? This stuff could eventually take over this whole area. And so we look at this, we're familiar with what this one looks like. Look around you, do you see any more? When our new director came on, Greg, he told me a lot about why he was connected to nature and I talked a lot about why I was connected to nature and, and a lot of that stems from using nature as a resource for healing. What we ultimately settled on was the alternative high schools. I find that those are teens that are struggling a lot of times. They're all there for different reasons. They're really amazing humans and really good individuals. My dyslexia kind of makes it tough in math with numbers because it can get really frustrating at times. Too much, that's why I'm here, is because I talk too much and say some stuff that I shouldn't. It's because everyone here is that they've definitely had their own struggles and they've had a lot of them too. I, I bundle my uh, uh, my uh, feelings into a tight ball and I only let it out in certain moments. Still had that, that mindset of stay out of the direct uh, spotlight and don't cause any problems. I can't really explain how I feel. The way I explain things is through art and painting. I suffer from anxiety and depression. I have my whole life and I always will. I found over the years that the best way to combat that is to spend time outdoors. There was really no one around to tell me that when I was a teenager. I thought, man, if someone had told me about that when I was 16, 17 years old, maybe I could have made that connection a lot earlier and, and learned some of the healing processes a lot sooner in my life. So it's right now called Nature to Nurture. It is a eight to potentially 16 week program. Everything from Conservation 101 to climate change to how to make an impact on the environment in your own community and within yourself. I feel like she really creates the atmosphere of no judgment. And she's also, I like how she gets pumped up about things, like all, all the work she does and everything we do, she like takes joy in that. And I like that because someone who enjoys the work they're doing doesn't work a day in their life, really. Okay, so actually let's stop for a second. I know we're gonna hear a lot of highway action, but I just want you guys to stop and listen for like 10 seconds. I think in life, some of the people that helped give me confidence were just people who believed in me. And one of those was an art teacher that I had in high school, Mrs. Lewin, she's amazing. She was probably one of the first teachers who looked at me and said, you are awesome and you can do these things. My main strength is I love, I love working with my hands. I'm always a hands-on guy and this really has, this program has a lot of hands-on activities and stuff. Uh, so far, the project we're doing now with the birdhouses, because we're actually getting to see that take effect. And you get to watch as more creatures come to your area, and they'll usually come back year by year, especially if you leave out like bird seed and a bird feeder. You'll see them come back each year, and probably their offspring is what comes back as well. I'm more of a homebody, but after this experience, I realize that it's better to expand your horizon. I've learned a lot about different kinds of trees and um, woodpeckers and a bunch of animals. From now it feels like I could do anything, like I'm where I'm where I should be. She's a really good role model for people because if she's able to do that, then someone else with depression out there who's feeling down the dumps like they got nothing left, they could look at her and be like, I could be like that someday. I could be that type of person. So it's not over. She'd never been snowshoeing before. So we went out and we saw a deer cross and it was running and then it stopped and it saw us. And, and I don't think she'd experienced that before either. And she kind of stopped and she put her hands on my shoulders and she's right behind me and she's just like, look, it's so pretty. And it was, it was beautiful, it was absolutely beautiful and so, Having moments like that where you're, your students just stop and they listen and they feel that, that was really, really magical moment. I'm a little teary. Um, what I learned from her as a person is to kind of just keep an open mind about things. I want to volunteer at Little Forks. Uh, I mean, I won't be able to this summer, but definitely in the fall I want to do more cleanups. I want to get my 4-H group involved. You know, I want to bring my little cousins out to see. I've been more open-minded. It's actually expanded my horizons a lot more. And it's made life really great. So this was really worth it for me. Honestly, I hope that they're alive and happy and healthy enough. I know that that's a lofty goal. Um, I hope that they connect with nature.
nature. I hope that they teach their kids to connect with nature if they have them, and if they don't have kids, I hope that they are making a really positive difference doing what they want to do in life. Um, really, I mean, we want people to be leaders, but it's just important to be a follower, but follow something you love and you have passion for. Like these are memories I'm never gonna forget. Like being being able to work with this organization along with friends and people I'm actually comfortable with. I mean that's something that sticks with you for good. You don't have to worry about being judged. You can work as a team and it's very rewarding in the end because it has gives you that feeling of actually making a difference in the world.